I'll just let them. I'll just let. going to be recording this as well. So um, since nobody has any questions to get started, um, again, my name is Brana for those who are currently joining. And I uh, have been a trainer with Agent Locator now for over a year. And hopefully um, questions will start to come in as we move along. So if you have questions, again, just put it in the question and answer uh, section uh, of your Zoom or feel free to um, note it uh, in the chat area and I'm happy to go ahead and answer those questions for you. So um, I'm sharing my computer screen with you guys currently. And what you'll see here is this is actually one of our branded sites. And I decided um, that if we didn't have anybody who had any questions or answers, I was going to kind of show you some of the differences between a branded site and unbranded site. And then hopefully you might have some questions as we go along. So with our branded site, um, obviously the branded site has multiple different pages. You can focus on communities where you can isolate your community areas. Um, you can certainly have it as region. Um, so you see here, there's an Ajax area, for example, let's say you wanted to have a Durham region area and then have all the little sections under there. You certainly can do that. Um, and you can isolate the listings for all those areas um, under your communities. In our sellers section, um, in here with a branded site, typically you're going to see sold listings. Um, street match is a really great section. Um, in this section here, um, this is where um, people can type in their own personal address. So I'm just going to do that now, you know, for me, for example. Um, and they can submit that information and it's going to pull up. Um, if there's any sales that may be happening or sold or listings that may happen within my area. So I can certainly increase that to let's say five kilometers, which is really large, um, 600 meters. So when I were to go ahead and fill in all this information and submit it, it's gonna tell you that I'm looking, um, I'm currently in a detached home. So it's gonna find things um, you know, that are in relation um, to me. Um, and then um, put in my phone number here, uh, 5350, um, and then of course my email, uh, let's see. So this is how somebody would fill out a form in terms of street match and then submit. Oops. Uh, at agent locator. Okay, it's not recognizing that. So let's just do that and see if it recognizes that. There we go. So um, now we're all finished and that's how somebody would register if they're doing street match. Now with the street match, what it's gonna do is it's gonna let me know if any listings or solds have come through um, this um, uh, in my area based on uh, their circumference here and where I'm personally located. So let's go back here and we'll just hit this back button. Oh, wrong one. So that's how I would know if one of my neighbors go ahead and list any properties. We also have Homeworth. If I'm looking for um, maybe to get an idea of what the, my home might be worth, I can certainly fill in the information here. Again, all of this information that I'm um, filling in, when I go and do this, um, it's going to obviously recognize me right now. Um, I'm just curious at this point in time, or maybe I'm looking to refinance, or maybe this is where somebody would tell you um, when they're interested in selling, three to six months, six to 12, et cetera, or maybe they're just wanting to refinance and get a home value. When I click on that home value, um, it's gonna give me some criteria based on what's in my area currently, as you can see here. So, um, this is showing me that if I'm looking for square footage, 
what the condo apartments are worth, um, detached properties, which is probably more of where I'm looking at, you know, based on my home. Um, click here to see all the properties that were found. And then of course I can start doing um, listing searches and comparisons. So this would get, be a comparison to my home or this would be a comparison to my home. And so that's how um, the home worth page would work on um, a seller's, um, uh, you know, if somebody is looking to sell their home. Buyers have some other options available to them. Um, they can ask for new listing alerts. They've got calculators, which of course the sellers can use as well. There's the credit score information, which talks about credit score. And sometimes people need to understand about their credit score, save on interest, avoid money pit, and of course, five cost and mistakes. They can do a map search. Um, of course, all of our sites will have a blog. You can create an about us page with testimonials, um, a contacts page. We have the availability to create pre-construction pages as well. So this is kind of what um, a branded site would look at like, um, for example, um, in terms of your um, website. A lead generation website um, is very different. There is no branding with a lead generation. That's a really big difference. So a branded site will focus only uh, and more specifically on sellers than it will buyers. Um, whereas a lead generation website will focus on just buyers. So if I were to type in here, for example, Vaughn um, and then do a search for Vaughn, this is how I would register myself within the CRM system um, once I were to click on an ad. So um, when I click on an ad, actually where I would go is the ad is going to take me directly to the listings page. Now, for some reason, my um, website is a little slow right now. There we go. Uh, my internet's a little slow. I do apologize. Um, but this is the listings page. So typing in Vaughn um, gives me all of the listings that are available. I can certainly isolate, um, you know, whether or not I want for sale or for rent. I can certainly isolate price ranges, number of bedrooms. I can definitely get more specific if I'm looking for a house. I don't want a cottage, you know, basically looking in Vaughn. Um, you know, I can isolate all of this. And as you'll notice, as I'm isolating all of this, you'll notice that um, all the properties are changing based on my criteria change. And of course, I can choose, you know, bathrooms, um, what do I want in minimum square footage, um, and so on. And it doesn't pull anything up in minimum square footage. So you also want to be careful about how many, um, uh, how many um, criteria somebody puts in also because it could end up giving them no information based on the MLS and what those criteria is. So they would just simply click on um, the property. At this point in time, they can go ahead and they can register um, in the system. Uh, oh, I didn't actually put in my email address. Let's do that. So by putting in an email address and filling in their information, they're going to come automatically into the CRM system. Um, obviously, once I finish registering, I can now click on photos. Um, I can scroll through and see different properties. Um, I can also make any property a favorite by clicking on the heart. Um, now, um, this might look different than your um, personal um, branded, uh, sorry, unbranded site. We do have a couple different versions of the unbranded sites as well as the branded. So, um, the, but they do function the same. When we go to the CRM system um, and I hit refresh here, um, what you're going to see is that my lead has come through here in terms of um, the lead generation website. Uh, the branded site just went to the street match. I'm not sure why it didn't 
go up in here unless it's not connected, um, but it should be. Um, but as you can see, uh, the unbranded site came through as a new lead home buyer. Your branded site would come through um, showing not set uh, in the system as opposed to new lead. So there are some differences in how a branded site will come through in comparison to an unbranded site. Does anybody have any questions for me at this point? No problem, Navita, that you had to go. Thank you for letting me know. Um, she'll check the video later. That's great. Anybody else with any questions? Anything that you'd like me to specifically um, cover for you guys? Okay, so I'm just going to continue through uh, and just basically go through a general training of our um, CRM and maybe some questions will come up as we're doing that. Um, so when the lead comes through uh, from the branded site, um, usually uh, an email gets sent out and as you can see that email got went out um, 45 seconds ago. Um, and so once that email is showing as delivered here, what you'll see here is that my email address has been validated. So now that my email has been validated, that lets you know that obviously you can connect with me in some way. Um, the text messaging service, that takes up to about five minutes for that to go through. So when um, we that text message goes through, again, the purpose of that is to validate. So what happens with the email first is that email activation link email, which I'll show you here, goes through and this is what it looks like. Once that email goes through, it's got a link here that the consumer can certainly click on. Again, um, they do not need to do anything or click on anything to validate themselves. As long as this email reaches their inbox, it will automatically validate. Um, so there's nothing that they have to do as a consumer to validate their email address. Now, in terms of the text message, when that first text message goes out, and I'm just going to make that go out right now, as long as it shows delivered, um, it would uh, um, validate the phone number. Now, right now it's showing failed. It's possible we don't have our Twilio set up in our site here, um, and that's not a problem. But um, right now, 647-954-5350, yep, that is the right number. Just wanted to make sure. I'm not sure why it's showing failed probably because we need to update something with the settings. Um, but again, um, when it does show failed, and I'm kind of glad it showed that, it keeps the icon black here. Now again, the black icons do not mean that they're invalid numbers. Very important to recognize that. Um, if this stays black and this is showing failed, then um, what happens is um, you need to... Um, phone the CR, phone the person directly. So to do that, you would simply click on the phone number and click dial lead. That's going to give you the opportunity to call directly from the CRM. So the same way that you're on a Zoom call right now with me or a Zoom webinar, you'd be talking through your computer, not through your cell phone. Um, but again, you can also do this through your cell phone. To do that through your cell phone, you would need to log into the CRM through your browser on your cell phone. And then at that point, you can go ahead and do the same thing through your cell phone as opposed to um, through the CRM on your computer. So nothing has changed. It looks exactly the same. You're going to get the same pop-up here in terms of the dialer. So now at this point, um, what we're going to do is just show you how the dialer works. We would simply click on the green button to talk. When we're talking, um, you're going to hear an automated message on your end. The client doesn't necessarily hear that automated message unless you want them to. Um, and then you're simply going to hit um, the red button to hang up. That was my phone call starting to come through to me. Um, and then, of course, you get this save and continue button. Now, the other thing to note is that that call would have been recorded for, is recorded for 12 seconds. Um, and the other thing is that saving continue. Now, what we recommend that you do is you log your calls 
right at this stage. You don't want to click that save and continue right away. You want to make sure that every phone call you know exactly what's happened. Um, it's really important to know and keep track of all of that um, because if you're not keeping track of your calls, then how do you know what you left off with them? How do you know what your conversation was? And if you have a recording of that conversation, then what you're needing to do is constantly play back that call. But if you give yourself an overview or what I like to call little breadcrumbs um, to yourself as to what happened with that call, then at least you know exactly where you're at with that particular client. What you're going to notice here is that you've got called, no message left. There's actually a pull down menu here, which allows you to choose um, from the pull down menu, the best call result. Let's say um, we say talk to lead. If we say talk to lead and we type our message, great conversation, for example, and then just hit the save and continue. What's going to happen is when we go to the notes and call section, that call is going to show um, right here. Here is that audio file um, which records the call for you. You've got a download file. Here is my note to myself. Here's the talk to lead. Here's the date and time of that call. Now, if I hit refresh, it should validate my email, uh, my phone number, I mean, which it does. As you can see, the phone number is showing with a green icon. The other thing to make note of for those of you who aren't sure or don't know is the pipeline has automatically changed to made contact. Now, if I had chosen or manually logged my call, uh, again, choosing the date and time and manually logging my call. One of the things to make note of in the notes and calls section is that the note icon here is the default. So if you're manually logging your phone calls, you need to make sure and remember to click on call. Choose your date and time. Again, you can definitely backdate your calls. So if I want to backdate to this date on April 21st, I can do that. Choose a call result, left voice message, you know, go ahead, type my message as to what that call was about and hit save. When I go into the calls, you're going to notice that it automatically put it in date order of, um, of the notes and calls section so that you have a proper timeline for yourself as to what's been going on with that particular lead. Now, does anybody have any questions for me? Anything again that you want clarification on? No? Okay, so we will continue. One of the things to make note of in terms of uh, the calls is you'll notice that when I manually log the call, there's no audio file here. Now, the advantage to calling directly from the CRM is the phone number that the individuals are going to see are going to be the Twilio phone number. They're not going to see my direct phone number or your direct phone number. They're going to see Twilio. So when they call back um, through, the C through that Twilio phone number, they're going to come directly to you because what Twilio is, for those of you maybe who don't have Twilio, is it's a virtual phone number that's on a permanent forwarding to your cell phone. Um, and so therefore, for when they call back, they're going to get you directly. Um, we have a question here from Zeta. Do we make the calls from our phone or do we need a special number to make the calls? No, you can definitely um, make the calls from your phone without a special number. Um, the special number would be the Twilio phone number if you have the Twilio system incorporated with your CRM system. How you would know that is if you go to the icon at the top here, which is the little user profile person icon, go to user preferences if you're not sure if you've got Twilio, you would click on phone account and then you're going to have all sorts of codes in here in terms of Twilio. So if you have Twilio, you would need to log into your CRM from your cell phone. Um, and then from your cell phone, that's where you're going to make your phone call while you're logged in from the CRM because that the CRM itself is using a dedicated phone number to call out. I hope that that answers your question. Um, you don't need another phone number. You just need to make sure that if you're calling from your cell phone that you log directly into the CRM from your cell phone by going to your web browser on your cell phone. So you would just simply, just to show you, I don't know if you guys can see, there's my cell phone. So if I go to my web browser, just to show you, 
agent locator. Here is, let me just get it in front of the camera. Not sure if you can see that, but here is um, agent locator on my cell phone. And then I would just simply log in um, on my cell phone. And by doing so, it's just logging in. Just to show you um, that it's just as easy to do this from your cell phone. What you're going to see, let me just see that hopefully you can see that. Uh, what you're going to see is the client's name and you're going to notice that all of the sections in here are um, the same as what's in your CRM here. I'm not sure if you were able to see that or not. Hopefully you were. Um, but you'll see that all of the sections here look identical to the sections that are in here. So each section here is in its own block. Um, and when you take a look at the block, you can see those blocks within your cell phone. Um, and then you would just simply do the same process. Click on the phone number, click dial lead from your cell phone while logged into the CRM. Um, so now that I'm in there, um, and again, I hope that that answers your question. We have another question here. You're very welcome, Sita. I'm glad to know that that answered your question. Um, any other questions as we're going along? Okay, so we will just move on then um, from there. Um, so uh, what you see here then is you have the capability of calling directly from the CRM. You also have the capability again of um, call, logging your call manually. Um, now again, the pipeline will change based on the results that you choose with your phone call. So whether you're calling directly from the CRM or whether you're manually logging your call, if I were to go ahead for example, and log uh, left voice message, which I did before. What typically this is going to show is going to validate here, but the pipeline would have moved to try to contact here as opposed to make contact. But because I showed in the system that we chatted first um, before I tried to contact, um, it went directly to make contact. Also with the pipeline, the system will only automatically change the first three options of the pipeline. Everything after that you need to manually change on your own. In terms of changing the phone validity information, so this has to do, this icon um, confirms your phone validity um, in your filters. So green icon means valid, black icon means unknown. Um, if I were to go opt out and choose the opt out here and type a message here and then click save, what it's going to do is it's going to change my phone icon to an opt out icon. If I were to go here and choose wrong number, it's going to do the same thing, change my phone icon to an invalid number. So it's very important that you choose the right options. If I put lead called in, it's going to put it back as valid. So whatever the options are that you choose with your phone, it's also going to automatically change the phone icons here. You'll notice there's the lead stats here. The lead stats will show you when somebody's registered on your site, the date and time that they've registered, and how they were last contacted and when. Um, this is very important because this all connects to your filters. So when you're looking at your filters to know who you need to call and when you need to call them, again, um, that's going to come into play based on you logging your phone calls. So another reason why it's really important to make sure to log your calls. When we take a look at the last active, it'll, the system through your lead generation website will show you the last time they were active. Um, it'll show you the type of homes they looked at and it'll show you whether or not the areas and how many properties they looked at as well. Um, it'll also let you know that a property search has already been created for them um, based on how they search. Now with your branded site, that does not happen. Um, with your branded site, it is different. I'm just going to actually um, go ahead and create uh, a search for myself here. Just give me one moment. I need to validate, so send me a text message, 647, yep, let me go ahead and validate. That could be why it didn't allow me the first time to, um, let's see here. So I'm going to just validate myself. 
I'm just waiting for that information to come through. So once I validate myself, it's going to make a difference, but it didn't come through to me yet. So I'm not sure what that code is, so I can't. So let me try and see if I can validate through email, resend the email. I have validated my account. Let's see if it refreshes here. Okay, so we're just going to pass this, but let me just see. Let me try and put in, let me log out actually. If I log out, that will be better because then I can go ahead and I can register myself again. So I'm just going to register myself again. Agent training, uh, Brana L. Okay, let's create, uh, let's do this one. We have multiple emails that work with our, okay, let's try that. Okay, oops. Okay, so I just went ahead and I registered, uh, refresh, and let's just see if it comes through. Hopefully it does, because it didn't come through before. So it hasn't come through yet and I'm not sure why and there could be a delay just with the system. So I do apologize for that. Um, anyways, um, what you're looking at here is your dashboard. So when again, um, a new lead comes through, um, that is a, um, from your branded site, it's not going to necessarily show you the same information here. Um, what it's going to do is in the notes and calls section, it's going to tell you what they looked at here. It's going to tell you if um, they registered on a main page. It's going to tell you if they searched a property first. This is where it's going to show you in the notes section first. If they looked at more than one property, then it's going to show you here within the last activity section here where you can look at the more details and in the more details you can see the properties that they've looked at. Um, it'll tell you if they've made any favorites. You can click on the photo. The photo is going to tell you here whether um, you know more details about the property the same uh, as what it shared with the cost customer or the consumer and it's going to give you the average price of analytics bedrooms and bathrooms property type and of course the locations and there's a map display that allows you to see the map. Now, when you go down past the pipeline, this is that listing search that the system with the lead generation automatically creates. But when you are coming from your branded site, you need to create this search on your own. So if you've got both lead gen and branded, there's a couple of different ways that you would create searches based on um, your products with us. Um, but right now, we'll just focus on the lead gen site. What you would do is come in here, click on the edit button. When you click on the edit button, you're going to have all of this criteria here. You can edit the criteria, change it, let's say, to $1.2 million and apply that filter. It's going to change the listings. I can also add criteria the same as you would from your MLS. Maybe I'm looking for three, four, five bedrooms. Again, it hasn't made any changes. If it did make changes, it would show you that right here underneath here. Any of the changes you make here, you need to update and save. Um, the other thing to make note of is these clocks here. These clocks will show you um, that we are automatically sending one time per day, um, but you can also go ahead and you can increase the number of times that you send out um, your uh, MLS listings, you can send it up to three times a day and then you would just have to change the clocks accordingly um, with the MLS here. So um, when you open up these tabs, you have the availability to change the clocks. We recommend that you only ch um, send out listings once a day, not three times a day. Um, but again, to change the clock, click on it and then just simply choose the numbers higher or lower in numbers. Keeping in mind that these clocks are 24 hour military clocks and therefore you want to be careful that you don't choose too late in the day or too early in the morning. So my usual time preference would be anywhere between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. and anywhere between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. because people are getting home from work or even though now with COVID-19 they're maybe working from home, 
they're still busy in their day to day um, with their kids or schooling or whatever the case may be. So typically they have the availability to look at um, listings after that dinner hour when their kids are kind of gone to sleep and, and it's a little easier for them uh, to kind of focus. So I usually choose between those times because if they're going to look at it during the day, they're going to look at it after they've gotten ready for work. And if they're going to look at it at night, they're going to look at it typically after dinner hour. Um, and so you want to make sure that any changes you update and save the filter there. And if you make any changes here, um, you want to update the filter here as well. So you also have the availability to change the frequency from up to three times a day to once a week, once every two weeks or once a month. Again, don't forget to update and save it. Um, and then after you've revised your listings, you want to make sure to send the listings out right away by clicking this force campaign execution button and then clicking yes. So does anybody have any more questions or any other questions that maybe they'd like me to cover um, you know, while we're here during this question and answer period? Otherwise, I'll just keep going through the CRM. Please understand there's no silly questions. You can ask anything. I'm here to help you and answer all of your questions. Okay, so we will continue on um, then from here. So uh, as I was mentioning, you can click the force campaign and click yes. Um, when you click on the email section here, it's going to show you all of the emails that have gone out to your clients. If you click on the email itself, this is going to show you the properties that have gone out to them. So you always are prepared and know prior to calling them exactly what they have the potential of looking at or that they've looked at. There are are different statuses here. There's in progress, there's sent, there's delivered, there's open, there's clicked, and there's dropped. The clicked means that they physically opened up the email, clicked on a property, and you'll know that property because it's going to show up here uh, in the search that they viewed that property um, from the email address. Um, and then um, you can then talk to them about that property and what made what was interesting to them for that property. We also have a way of um, not completely pinpointing where people are located, but giving you an idea of where they're located. This map here will show you the country and city they're located in uh, within, think about a hundred kilometer radius, or if you're in the US, a hundred mile radius. Um, and it doesn't pinpoint it. So it goes by their IP address um, based on their service provider. So that's why we say it just kind of gives you an idea of where they're located. Um, it could be where they work. It could be where they live. They could be at a friend's house. You just don't know. But at least you have an idea as to whether or not they're local. Uh, in terms of um, our tabs up here, so we've talked about um, the text messaging tab, we've talked about the email tab, the notes and calls tab, there is the tasks tab that is here. This is where you would create tasks for yourself. Um, tasks should be created only as unique tasks. So if you have um, a task or a reminder that you need for yourself, um, basically, let's say you needed to connect an individual with a mortgage broker, you would create a task for yourself as a reminder to, let's say, follow up with the mortgage broker and the client to make sure that they've been in communication with one another. So in this case, follow up uh, for mortgage broker contact share mortgage broker details with client and vice versa and make sure connected and moving forward. I would put this as an in progress because you've already maybe shared or going to share information with them. I would put it as a high priority. If I've gone ahead and connected them today and shared all that information with them, I'd want to go ahead and follow up in the next two to three business days and click save. And the reason I put it as in progress because it's something that I've already started. If I hadn't started it where I hadn't connected them, then that would have been a not started section. But if you start something and you're working towards a due date, um, but you're in progress with that, that would be an in progress. Then once I've gone ahead and completed that and followed up and everything's hunky-dory, I would go ahead and I would log my call based on that, come back to my tasks, 
and I would hit complete and yes. It's really important that when you do your tasks that you complete your tasks and show them as completed. So when I look here, it'll show completed so I know that I have followed up with them and everything is good. And then it may give me a new timeline based on um, whatever the mortgage broker person says, follow up on mortgage, um, uh, mortgage pricing for buying a house. So what is their budget? For example, that would be a not started, but it's still a high priority. You know, I could put that here and we can start looking in that budget, you know, just to make sure as an example. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to put that as complete. Um, so now, you know, you can see that these are completed. And when I hit refresh here, it's going to take them away from here. Um, actually, it didn't take them away, but it shows that I had them here and that I've completed them. And that's because I chose external dates and then I completed them before those external dates. So it just kind of gives you an idea in terms of tasks. You want to make sure that you're not putting in your everyday regular routine tasks. It's really important. You want to make sure that you're only putting in tasks as reminders for yourself or things that you actually need to action for that particular lead. Don't do your everyday regular routine. It's just going to become an administrative nightmare for you. Um, any questions? Anybody have any questions for me? Okay, moving on. Um, we have here to this plus sign. This plus sign is what we call our tagging system. As you can see, we have a lot of tags that are in here that we've created over time. The way that we suggest that you create tags is based on category and then a tag associated to that category. So you, this category, for example, the C means communication. Let me see if I can pull up for you. Actually, I'll do that here. This question mark at the bottom is one of our resources. Um, so I'm just going to pull up sample tag list. And here is sample tags to use. So as you can see here, let me see, put it on a bigger screen. So as you can see here, this is how we recommend that you organize your tags. You organize them based on category and then the tag itself. And then here's your definitions and what they mean. So for example, your communications tag, you put a C colon email. This would mean that they respond to emails if you put that tag or they respond to text or they're only available in the evenings or maybe it's a landline and they don't have a cell phone or perhaps buyer lost, the buyer lost information. Um, maybe they've already purchased a property. Um, Maybe the lead is an agent, maybe they're out of area, whatever the case may be. We also have future opportunities, has agent. That's a big one because a lot of people will tell you that they have an agent and maybe they really don't. But they say that because they really just don't want to be bothered at this point in time. One of the things with um, real, uh, real estate people or the consumer is that they can actually search online and don't need an agent until they're ready to physically see a property or to put pen to paper. So because of that, sometimes they'll tell you they have an agent when they really don't. So just keep following up with them regardless. And even if they do have an agent, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're not going to use you in the future. We have had those happen very often where many times they absolutely go to the agent that's being more attentive to them and caring about their needs. Situation, maybe they're renting, maybe they're going through divorce, maybe they're an investor relocating, lender lost, maybe they've got bad credit, um, uh, or maybe they still need approval, seller lost. A lot of them are very similar to the buyer lost, but again, um, there are some other ones here. And then of course, miscellaneous, um, just monitor their activities. So um, these, those are our um, tags. What I'll do is I'm going to put the link in the chat. So let me just do that right now. So that if you guys need that uh, link, you can have it there. 
So there's the link to our sample tag list so that you have it. Um, you can just simply click on that and it'll take you to this page here. Um, so that has to, this is one of our resources. You can ask the CRM really any question you want. You can ask it how to create an email, for example, um, and all of these topics are going to pop up for you here. Um, another resource we have for you is this question mark at the top here. Every page or every section within our CRM has this question mark here. Um, and then when you click on it, it'll give you an assortment of videos so that you can watch and learn how to utilize the CRM um, in these ways and understand what all of the sections are. A third resource, now again, this was our home screen dashboard, so all those videos are in relation to that. If I were to, for example, go to the tasks menu um, and click on that question mark, it's going to have tasks videos here. It's not going to have the same videos that were on that home screen. So that's what I mean by each page has its own set of videos. A third resource for you is this heart here. The main page it takes you to is our updates page where you can see any new updates that have happened within the CRM. If you go to the agent locator at the top, this will take you to the desk resource area where there's articles, how to, step by steps, videos, etc. You can also register for different webinars that we hold on a monthly basis. We do hold these webinars every single month. So if you click on Agent Locator Webinars and then Upcoming Webinars in here, um, the same way that you've registered for this one, um, you've got all of the different webinars that are available to you. Um, here's the Beverly Ruffner Live Dialing Webinars. We have here the Leveraging Your Services Webinars. Um, this one's also a good one, um, 57 um, deals between three different agents. We had done a webinar where we interviewed a couple of different agents. Um, so there's a lot of different information. Here's some COVID-19 talks that we have been doing live with um, Addo and Crystal um, with our um, clients as well, where they're talking about things that you can be doing during this time of COVID-19. Um, and then, of course, if you go back here again, you've got webinars on demand. Here we'll teach you basic foundational pieces about our lead generation website, um, branded websites, how to action those, uh, street match Facebook, and so on. And then, of course, um, the last section here, these live dialing webinars here, these are pre-recorded webinars um, from Beverly Ruffner that you can watch also. So we have a lot of resources that are available to you to utilize as well. Um, we didn't go over any of our filters, but we talk about filters as well. Your filters, again, um, in the CRM are to help you um, organize yourself and be able to find your leads easier and faster, including tags. So these are some of the things that you want to look out for and focus on while you're um, in the CRM system. Do you have any, anybody have any other questions for me? Okay, so just so you know, we have been running some extra trainings as well. Um, let me just see if I can pull that here, the calendar. Let me just pull that calendar for you. Um, we've also been running trainings um, with our trainers. So if um, you're looking to have, um, uh, you know, get some extra training or really want to focus in on something, I've added a second link. The second link is a Calendly link where you can go ahead and you can book a time with one of our trainers um, as one of our existing clients. So you can have that one-on-one -on -one session as well. Since there's no other questions, um, when this video um, uh, becomes a, a link, we will upload this to our Facebook page. So if you're members of our Facebook page, um, you will be able to um, see this video there and reference it there as well. Um, and then again, um, feel free to contact us, contact our support team or you can email me um, if you have any specific questions. Uh, let me just give you my email. Uh, 
agentlocator.ca. So feel free to email me at any time as well if you have any questions um, that maybe you couldn't think of now, but you think of later. So I hope that this has been useful for everybody. Um, I wish you all luck. Hopefully you're all staying safe during COVID-19. And um, we will chat again soon. Bye, guys.